Hello, you are listening to Talking Utter Slot, the perfect antidote to the regret you feel about those late night slot car purchases on eBay. I'm Scott Brownlee. Uh, I'm Pedro. In this episode of Talking Utter Slot, we'll be chatting about new liveries on Alpine Rally cars, 80s F1, dubious scale accuracy and my return to club racing. But first, Pedro. What caught your eye this week? Was it? Been, uh, I, you just throw me with the running order. That we're not also going to announce that we're going to chat about Daytona. Oh yes, that wouldn't take long. It was very dull, oh, very okay. long, but very dull. Uh-huh. No, I I managed to find a, a free-ish sort of feed on YouTube so yes. I could watch. It was dubious, and um, I haven't watched NASCAR for some years. And there's a reason for it that. was. There were yeah, there's a reason for that. There was two long lines of cars lapping presumably nearly flat out at 180 odd miles an hour, bumper to bumper for lap after lap after lap, minute after minute. And it was like a very high speed um, traffic jam, really. And then every now and again, uh, somebody would bump into somebody and they'd crash. So, And as far as I could... Re- uh, so 200 as- miles an hour, roughly. Um, uh-huh. uh, 500 miles. So the race is quite long. Do they... Do they have timeouts? Do they have stoppages? What, what? Well, they have pit stops. They also seem to have something called stages, a bit like bicycle racing. Ah, uh, yeah, they did. Where, well back, didn't they? And they score points, which again is an indication to me that the whole thing's a bit dull. Oh. If you have to do, if you if you have to have two artificial finishes before you have the real one, yeah. Although possibly that's because at the real one, as best I could make out on the so-called highlights from NASCAR that I watched this morning. Um, they had about three or four crashes in the last two laps because they kept trying to have the last two laps over and over. Yeah. And eventually, somebody from NASCAR just decided who'd won because when they threw a yellow or something or other, rather than it be who crossed the finishing line first. So if you, so very, if you watched four hours of roundy, 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 not to get a genuine finish, that is dull. It is a bit dull. The the official highlights thing on YouTube was 13 minutes long and about half of that was post-race interviews. So even they think there's not much to <laughs> to show. Do they drink milk at the end of this one or is that just Indianapolis? I think that's an Indianapolis thing. Yeah. Not uh, I'm not sure. What was good was the the free streaming service was it was fine up until the race started. So you could there was like hours of pre race build up of um, racing drivers in blazers and ties, which is always a bit odd. I don't why do Americans think you have to wear a blazer and tie to commentate on a motor race? It's <laughs> there is still uh, what, that is sweet. <laughs> like, it's very ABC nineteen seventy three at the India's fashion. But what was interesting was Michael Waltrip, who you might remember was one of the Waltrip brothers. I Even I've heard of him. Yeah. He was a re- he, I think he was a kind of okay driver, but he was more of a character. He was doing the Martin Brundle style kind of grid walk, albeit it Good. was up and down between the car. Yeah, and it was clearly all prearranged to oh. the extent that when he met the man in the Wendy's Burgers car, a Wendy's Burgers QR oh, code popped up God. in the corner of the screen. Um, but at least he had the charm and and humour to kind of carry that off, and you know mm-hmm. those people with babies and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah. Is that so part of the actually, I, I enjoyed. Yeah, I don't know. That was that was live. Yeah. I enjoyed that more than the races. So that was just me. So yeah, not much. Having said, there's not much to talk about. I've now prattled on about it. But essentially, it was a disappointment. But it reminded me that years ago, when you could get NASCAR and IRL models from SCX and Skeletric, Skeletric. Uh, the um, I'm trying not to say skelet tricks, and I'm encouraging so, you to say skelet tricks. But there you s- go, skelet trick. When you could get NASCAR models, um, I thought, wouldn't it be great to build probably from wood and route a huge oval circuit that you could run these cars in a realistic way, so they were sort of flat out down the streets and kind of just hanging on round gently banked curves, and wouldn't that be marvellous? And it would take you know weeks to build probably and all that and then you'd get the car on there and you'd be pretty much flat all out all the way around and it would just go drone drone <laughs> drone and i thought yeah that, but it's like the real thing so i suppose but there anyway. are i've seen on youtube people who have made um big banked oval tracks slot car tracks 
And I just think, well, I don't want to draw the outside lane on that particular track because you're going to do easily an extra half a lap per two laps. Well, that, well, that's, well I suppose it depends. I mean, can you do bump drafting in slot cars? I don't know. I you, guess you can't do draft. If you, if you fulfilled your dream and made these things, you'd presumably have to, I don't know what the term is, but stack You'd have to have a smaller wheel on the smaller tire on the inside and a larger one on the outside to get your cornering right. Is that right? Consciously warped, sh- consciously warped consciously chassis. Warped chassis yeah. Really... Wow. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Well, that's how weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's technically <laughs> possible, but let's not go there. Yeah. <clears throat> fail, un- fa- fail under all that. Fa- and hopefully, we're not upsetting our American listeners. Are they, have we got American listeners? Not anymore. Anyway, we did have one or two. Yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Pedro. What caught your eye? Uh, what caught my eye? Um, not a lot has rattled my cage this week. There is something that I'll get to that obviously has rattled my cage, but something that I thought was very pretty, although the photos weren't that um, enlightening, really. Uh, on slotcarpassion.com, always worth a visit. Um, Alpine, uh, Alpines. Is it a three ten? From Team Slot, they're doing three new liveries, liveries, sorry, on the um, 310 that they do. And they all, I think, are Le Mans cars, and they all look quite pretty from above. But I don't believe there were any side-on shots. It was all aerial stuff, which is a bit odd. But... I th- I believe they're Avant Slot, not Team Slot. Oh, I apologise. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> so in my notes, I'd put Team Slot, brackets, don't fully trust. Avant Slot, I'm not sure I fully trust them either, to be honest. But I didn't. Are you sure? Why, fact why don't man? This is talking utter slot. We don't have to That's be sure of our facts. But no, I think it, I, I believe that it's an advanced slot model. Yes. I didn't know they did one. Oh no, I did know they did one. Oh whatever. The team slot one is quite pretty, but I just don't trust their um, mechanicals. The team slot one is very pretty. I know someone at Oxford who uh, has got one, and it's. It, I was sore tempted. I think he offered to sell it to me. Um, I was sore tempted by it, but. It's a pretty car, and I don't have a lot of space for purely pretty cars. I like my pretty cars to run pretty well. And if it's a pretty car that runs pretty atrociously, then that's pretty much not my bag. And how many times can I get the word pretty into a couple of sentences? Um, Quite a few, I I think, is the answer to that one. So that was good. I like the look of those, but I won't buy one. Um, (laughs) Scalotto, correctly pronounced, Scalotto. F1s, there's yet more chatter about the livery ones, um, Williams's and Ferrari's, is, um, but I'm not interested is I want the Nakajima one, um, and that apparently I think might not make it until the middle of the year. Um, but there, I'm, I'm almost borderline excited by those, I like the idea of them, they're an era of car that I like, particularly if they do a Jordan, uh, a 7-up Jordan would be great in that, library, in that shape, um, so I was excited about those. Okay, um, but and will you get one though? Well, I get one. What? It's a good well, auto. You said you're excited. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No, the Nakajima. I've pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered it ages ago, um, like I pre-ordered the Scalotto NSX ages ago, and no sign of either. Um, but I have, I have mentioned it before. I do now. I am in possession of a Scalotto NSX white kit, and I'm humming and hiring about uh, what um, paint job I slap on it in the summer when it's a bit. Uh, bit more favourable to spraying. Oh, well, if I can lead you to a certain conclusion, uh, oh. having, uh, at your recommendation, it must be said, I've been binge-watching Road to Le Mans with Michael Fassbinder. Oh, I love that speech. On YouTube. Yeah. It's very good, so thank you. You did, you did encourage me to watch it. Uh, that green, sort of satin green mm-hmm. 911 that that team races, beautiful. Yeah, and we, we, would, we picked uh, up Pereira it. doing it. They are. Hopefully, I, you know, I like my Carreras, uh, but I hope Scalectric do that livery as well. And I, Simon, if you're listening. <laughs> I won't pay you the three quid unless you do it. Um, I believe there is a set of decals available, so you could do, do a DIY on that if you were. So you're shaking your head. You don't do DIY. I think, I think yeah, uh, well, you know, it's, yes, it wouldn't be as good. Let's put it that way. No, it wouldn't be as good, but it would be yours. And that's what I like about white kits. One, they aren't the same as everybody else's, although um, one that I'm working on, and I've annoyingly, nearly swore, annoyingly lost a couple of the decals for because it's taken me so long to do, but uh, a Scalotto 991, I was trying to do the Coca-Cola uh, library, 
and lo and behold, they announce they're going to do the Coca-Cola Library. So theirs will be better than mine, but mine will be mine. And that's what I like about it. Talking about stickers, decals, decals. Decals. Weren't you... Decals. Uh, weren't you... Al- I think it would still be... Anyway, wouldn't you had mentioned to me that you were a little disappointed in... Was that an NSR 908 with oh, sticker oh, on headlamps? No, 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 no. Uh, that's well and truly cage rattled. I mean, and I tried to tell them off when they did the first one, but they didn't listen to me. <laughs> They've just why would they? You. Why would they? Well, except why would they not? Um, yeah, they've announced a Yurst Racing 908. Um, I think it's Daytona. Obviously, a bit of nighttime racing. Obviously, they need some headlights. So they just put some decals on. That's outrageous. I'm sorry. I just don't approve. It's just cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Well, it's uh, Fly did the same, didn't they, on some of the 908s? No, did something. they really? To be... To be f- well, to be fair, to be fair, it's not actually head. It's the, as would accurate at the start of the race, the covering taped over the headlamps. They've just done as a, a tampo printing, so it sort of looks right. But I can't see. But of course, it reminds us of our friends in NASCAR again with stick-on headlamps. Yeah. Can I redeem myself with NASCAR? Because one of the things I'm most excited about for this year uh, is Le Mans. Oh, yes. And one of the reasons I'm most excited about Le Mans is all of the wonderful new cars. But, 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 Garage 54, 56, oh my God. whichever it is, yeah. the extra one, which is a NASCAR. They're going to run a NASCAR at Le Mans. And who's driving which it? Is something that, for, oh, Jimmy Johnson. And? Jensen Button. There you go. And uh, a guy I can't remember. Rockefeller? Is it, is it Rockefeller? That's a bit damning that we can't remember um, the third guy, isn't it? Sorry, mate. Well, I think <laughs> you don't count. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I think it's a and um but you know Jimmy Johnson, Jensen Button, fantastic. And when this thing is gonna sound great, it's gonna be this open pipes V eight going <laughs> There are there are some YouTube videos or certainly on Instagram, Jensen was posting some stuff of the thing rumbling around the track and it does look quite I I think next to I don't know, uh, whatever Ferrari G T threes are may or may not appear there. Uh, it's just going to look like a huge, great slab of American iron. It's going to sound like a huge, great. great slab of American iron. Uh, I kind of want it to do quite well, but hell, if they actually got somewhere good, it would be amazing. Well, it will be interesting to see how, how close it gets. But, they, of course, one of the things in testing, because uh, NASCAR cars don't have lights they just have stickers on the body that look like lights ah, um they've got to actually develop headlamps and tail lights and all that stuff for this nascar because ordinarily it wouldn't carry it wouldn't it be ironic so, um, if the thing it you know eight uh, ten hours into the race uh, as the, as the night is there the thing that actually cripples it is the fact that their lights aren't up to snuff and their lights don't work and they have to retire because the lights that aren't would be- good that would be irritating to the entire operation. But uh, I'm really excited about that. So, yeah, so I've not got a complete downer on NASCAR. I think it's great. Going back, uh, uh, the, the sound of it, um, uh, the last time, I haven't been to Le Mans for many a year, and I'm trying to think of, uh, it, maybe it was 2002, 2003, um, sitting under the one of the tribunes, which I dare say you can't do now, but um, sheltering under one of the tribunes at night, one of the things that kept me awake was the sound of the yellow Corvettes going past because they were very distinctive. You cannot, there's all this European multi-valve, multi-cylinder stuff going past and then suddenly there's this cart and horse type affair that just <laughs> growls past. Excellent. It is, yeah, it is. it was a good sound. Anyway, anyway, that's to come. That's something to look forward to in June. But you mentioned uh, stickers and so uh, fake headlights... Almost as bad uh-huh. as the fish eyes on the 80 quid Mustang Thunderslot. Almost as bad as that thing yes. I sent you a link to where I actually said, what the actual effety Jeff is this? And we'll I'll put a link up somewhere. I'll put some pictures up if you go to YouTube. Um, what was that thing? A wing car, a painted up wing car pretending to be it, a Toyota. It was my description. The description was 124th custom painted Toyota LMP slot car. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Where, no. Well, this this looks like the sort of silver insert of something that's gone. It's, it looks like a bit of the package. Yeah. You know the yes, bit it you does, get. Yes, it does, doesn't it? You can slot it. <laughs> it looks, 
the slot it packaging the bit that's sort of molded over the top of the car to hold oh, it. Oh, someone it has like to do that. that. Someone has to convert one of those <laughs> into a car. <laughs> Well, this is it. It's painted mostly silver with a red bit down the middle and a little lump with and? It and black lines. And it's and it's dreadful. But the thing which just kills it for me, because I like scale models, the whole point is it's scale models, this has got, mm, this has got a stick-on front wheel. Oh. So it's not they've not even got a wheel arch. It's not even they've got a stick on picture of a front wheel. And they've not even made it touch the ground. They've got it hovering. <laughs> But why haven't they painted so, it? Because no. if they painted it on the inside, I mean, it'd be a bit. They're obviously a bit challenged on the painting because when you say they've um, sort of blacked in the panel lines, to scale those panel lines would be about four inches wide. They're massive, great, sharpy lines yeah. that they've inked on. You would. Oh yeah, you would lose small children down them in real life. I mean, they're, they're, they're not just panel lines. They're, massive car. anyway um it's 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 completely not what i think of as a model car no. or even a slot i don't know why they bother certain... calling it 124th either why why say it's a scale when it clearly isn't a scale of model of anything it's just a wing car i mean yes i shake my head in disbelief at it but um i accept grudgingly that this is a broad church the slot car church and um people can do that if they want but really must they well, I saw I've, somewhere on YouTube, and God, I'll try and find the link. Um, it's a proposed to be a world record lap, so it's a big <gasps> commercial track, you know, massive kind of quite big thing, and it takes one point two three seconds or something. That's weird. I mean, you you lit you literally cannot see the car going right. I I nearly <laughs> crazy you that link. We must have both got that this week. Um, I think that's something to do with uh, Chummy from Cleve Tech tips on youtube i think that was the world championships that he was at a i'm going to point the finger at him anyway um i saw that and just and they go whoa 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 a world record and i'm thinking well it's not a world record is it it's a track record but it's a different track to uh, other tracks around the world so it's not a world record but it was just ridiculous it's... you couldn't see it uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, maybe he is, and I'm, you know, as we'll find out later, uh, I'm not the best throttle man in the world, well, but seamlessly. he must just have, he must just have planted the as a the metaphorical foot down, and held it because you couldn't actually see it in order yeah. to make any throttle input. I, part of that so, might have been anyways. a wide angle lens because it, it's an aerial shot, isn't it? It looks like camera stuck yeah. on the ceiling. Bemused, bemused me, bemused mm -hmm. me. That's what it's not for me. But, so if you enjoy that sort of thing, great. But you know, but me. Scott, what you've done there is a seamless link into what you were doing last week when you went clubbing, and I'm not talking Magaluth weekend. Oh. Uh, yeah, a return to racing of sorts. Um, so the background is, uh, I used to go to a couple of slot car clubs uh, uh, once a week or once a fortnight. So, uh, but that was um, about 10, 15 years ago. And once I got my own track, I kind of stopped doing that because it was easier just to, to as it were, go and play on my own uh, my own thing. So, um, but every now and again, I go going back to one of the clubs. And one of the things I've always liked doing is visiting different tracks and clubs all over the place. So over the years, a um, bit of a slot gypsy, I've been to places. So I uh, went down to an old haunt at Bull Electrics down in Hampshire, which is a routed wood, six lanes, very analogue, uh, paper score, uh, cards, and you, you, know, you drive heats, you score four points for a win, three, two, one, add that up, and you get to the thing. We had four classes uh in the night, so GT3 from pre-2000. Do they not have timing then? The timing is a DS box. Um, so you press the go button and it times each. There's four boxes, one for each lane, okay. and it gives you times, etc. But we only record who won, who came second. No, 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 rec no records of time, etc. And um, so, yeah, four classes, GT3 from pre-2000. Uh, TV and movie, which I thought was a genius classification, <laughs> but we'll come back to that. Uh, GTE and Hornby front-engined classics. Now, this is one of the great things about these clubs. Was you, I think, when you won uh, a week or a, a quarter, you got to pick the classes that you wanted. And uh, so this is the definitions. Now, uh, in racing, I had an old Polycar 911 GT3. 
it fitted that run. I didn't think it'd be particularly quick, but it was, you know, it fitted that one. I had an Aston V8 from one of the set cars, the Skeletrix Aston, the bright red one, which I think just looks lovely, no interior. Um, and for Hornbury front engine classic, I took a Caterham, which I thought was going to be good. Caterham 7, nice and lightweight. <laughs> I have two of them. They're very well run in. And for TV and movie, I thought, well, you know, I've got Batmobile, I've got other things. You went know, in a few months' time, a, a Lady Penelope Fab One we may have been have, a choice. We all will have that. Yeah. Well, but I took my uh, Starsky and Hutch oh. uh, Gran Torino. <laughs> Did you take a look at uh, which I thought, second cardboard boxes? Sadly, no. Ah. No, I should have done. But what? What I thought this will not be too bad because essentially it's a big but effectively the same as a Trans Am Camaro Mustang, isn't it? So it raced at Le Mans. The same tyres, same sh- yeah, and it raced at Le Mans. It did. Anyway, it took it along, but it turns out that the, the interpretation of TV and movie, I was a little bit too literal. I thought dramatic TV and movie, <laughs> and of course some, as in real motor racing, oh. others had gone. Okay, well Formula One's on the telly, oh. so I can run a Formula One car. Or I can run. So basically, it became an, an open class. Oh, you no, could no. run Point of order, Mr. almost Chairman, anything. I, I would not allow uh, an F1 car. That's outrageous. Well, there was F1, there was Indy cars, yeah, there was everything. So, uh, which is fine. It's all a bit of fun. Um, and anyway, it's no more or less competitive than me running a Grand Torino against a Mr. Bean Mini or a, you know, a, I mean, there. the modern Skeletrix catalogue is, you could, you know, Blues Brothers car, all that sort of stuff. Oh, yes. um, so, yeah. So it was good fun. I mean, the only class I came reasonably close to pace because I'd be you know, trying to re-remember the track and not fall off uh, was the Caterhams, which I think was the last one. Uh, but I, when I say reasonably close to the page, I, out of the nine people who were there, I think I probably came seventh. But that was good enough. It was it was good fun. Uh, and then on Saturday, much uh, the contrast was huge because it was so. You know, Boletrix is in a an outbuilding, uh, sort of an old stone. An old barn or, it or something, I, and it's. A... I went once. I think after the haven't swaps, well, haven't swap meet a few years back, probably pre-pandemic. Everything seems to be pre-pandemic. Um, they opened up so that if anyone had made a purchase at Havant, they could uh, sort of run up the A3. I don't know uh, up the road and go and get a little um, blast, which I did. And it, it um, I was envious of the setup because it's permanent, and um, it did appear to be a sort of farm buildings. But it was—it's it's yeah, a yeah. great little track. It's great. It's, I think as ever, everybody's sort of associable friends. Everybody's welcoming. It's good fun. Mm. Uh, but the new South Coast Slot Car Club, to give it its full and proper title, uh, is quite a different beast, and it's been organised and set up by. Uh, Johnny's workshop, as people might recognise him from the forums. At, at, at that point, you're supposed to say friend of the podcast, Johnny's workshop. Although I'm, I'm assuming podcast, a lot, he, he, he may be offended by us. I don't know. He might be after this. Yeah, so far, friend so far, yeah. No, uh, uh, yeah, so far. No, I should be fine. And uh, what's interesting about it is a number of things for me, anyway, is that it's uh, it's once a month. It's set up in uh, a high street cafe uh, on the floor, sort of at the back half of a cafe, which is a sort of small. You know, it's got a stage, dance floor type, so you can hold mm-hmm. small concerts or whatever there, but it's on the floor. Again, uh, YouTube is your friend, so look up Johnny's Workshop or on the forums. Um, and he builds a four-lane Carrera track, which is a different layout every month, so a new track for everybody. Um, and it's been I think he's been running it for about four or five months, uh, and I wanted to go, and it's Saturday afternoon, so it's great. Um, went down there... Uh, computer controlled racing timing uh in fact it's a system that that jean for example, it's, it is johnny is in fact jean uh, jean created during lockdown when he was uh, doing his own thing and getting having sort of uh, after that getting mates round to the house um and it's it's very effective in fact it will run itself once you press go a race run countdown race starts does all the timing race finishes uh, and then a timer starts It'll, it generates the grid for the next one Yes. Shows you which lane you should be on, and it counts down. And if you don't do anything, it'll start the race and off you go. Has he done um, all of that? Has he sort of made the sensors and done the software? And I, I, I don't think he made the hardware. He's, I think he certainly made the the software or adapted the software to do yeah. it. But it's uh, it's quite it's quite impressive. I mean, compared to a 
pressing a button on a DS to kind of <laughs> reset and start. You know, yeah. it's a it's it's very big a big very twenty first century. Let's put it that way. I, I have a uh, DS timer, and I will confess, I don't know if I ever had instructions. It's got probably only two buttons on it, and I've never I never remember how to properly start a race. And quite frequently, I find that I'm in a some kind of timed thing rather than actual kind of free running. It's just a mystery to me that device, but it, it gives me timing, and I'm sorry digression. Well, that's it. No, no, no. And actually, uh, you've you've segued neatly onto. So, whereas Bulletrix and clubs that I'm more used to, you run a race, and each heat is an individual race, and there's a winner, and you get points, and then you total up those points, and that's who's won the category. What the guys at South Coast Slot Car Club or SCSCC, I don't know which is easier to say, down in Worthing, <laughs> uh, although you run four heats and you're racing against different people because you're on different lanes. Actually, it's a cumulative time, and that generates that. So you're not really in a race as such. It's a kind of a time trial, although you're on track with different people. That's a bit weird uh, for someone who's used to a kind of, am I in second place, am I in third place? Should I go any faster or should I just be careful? But that's um, that's a, a club thing, isn't it? Because we do that at Oxford, and I never fully understand why it isn't just, you know, the World Championship for Formula 1, for most championships, it's like, the winner gets 10 points, the second place gets so many points, the third place gets so many, and you add up the points. It's not done on cumulative time over a season. I don't, I, it is a source of annoyance to me, and it is a source of amusement to the rest of the Oxford people that once we finish a series of uh, races and they announce who has won, and they say, Oh, I only beat you by, you beat me by two seconds. Um, I then say, Can we just see what the points are? And partly I do that because nine times out of ten I manage to jump a space because <laughs> I'm not top three, but I might just scrape fourth if we do it purely on points rather than time. But it's a club thing. I don't. I I don't get it either. Why don't we mimic the real world? Uh, well, clearly individual clubs do things differently, and there's prob there's no right or wrong. Well, there is. Uh, it just was. I was on... <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's my way of doing it. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, there are dif different ways of doing it, and uh, it works. But you couldn't do it without having the electronics. I mean, yeah. that I think that's maybe where you're, if an old-fashioned kind of human eyeballs, biro, and a clipboard, uh, there's no way you could do it that way. So it, it lends itself to something with that. Do you thing. mean um, old-fashioned way, that, rather like you see those charming photos of girlfriends of Jackie Stewart and Nicky Lauda sitting on pit walls with uh, with stopwatches making notes of times and things? That that wouldn't work with stock cars, would it? Uh, not least because we don't have anything like Jackie Stewart's girlfriend. No. In fact, I think she was his wife even then. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Why, anyway. why do I mean, stock cars well, not I... attract <laughs> attractive uh, models? Hmm. Why, does, why does spending a night racing toy cars <laughs> with a bunch of middle-aged beardy men not attract young women? It's a mystery to me, Scott. Who knows? Mystery. Who's a mis it's a mystery. Um, however, no, no, no discrimination involved. No. Uh, it was it, so. It was. It, as I say, it was a it, guys made me very welcome. Uh, Jean lent me a car because I didn't have a, a, a DTM, uh, which I didn't break. I'm pleased to say. Um, and I think uh, again, based on the classifications, there's a little video. We'll we'll post a link to the video. Um, I think I was as high as uh, so there was 11 people racing. I think I was as high as sixth in one class and as low as tenth in the, another one. Fine. I was. Uh, it wasn't really what it was all about. I was there to try something new, meet some more people. It's the taking part. What squad, was it's really taking part. taking part? That's what those losers always yeah. say. What's interesting though uh, was that people came from far and wide, and I mean far. There was a chap there from Weymouth, and according to Google Maps, that's more than a hundred miles each way, and that's quite a commitment. Now I've you know I've travelled to some distance. I've gone to Switzerland to race <laughs> toy cars. Um, so I can't say, but that was a kind of one-off with mates for the weekend thing. So it's interesting that the people it's drawing people who are in existing clubs are coming to this one. Um, my view is it's a fantastic opportunity. It's in a high street cafe, for God's sake. The people <laughs> who are going, you know, people are coming in for a coffee and a sticky bun and they can see uh, people having fun with toy cars. So the opportunity to kind of draw in newbies, I would have thought, was pretty high, far higher than the typical club in an outbuilding on a farm or you know, a village hall or something. Um, 
and I just wonder if that how a newbie would come get along with that because there's all you know, there's a lot of car prep, there's tire prep, etc. I told you you got um, to prep your tires, Scott. I told you. Well, I didn't, and I managed to come sixth in one class or other, so I don't know what that means. Um, Fifth, if you prep your tires. Yeah, I, it's just I, again, it's just not it's not what I do. So um, I think the most the furthest I got was I. I sort of gave the tires a quick brush with my thumb before the start. Just to kind of <laughs> Put a layer of grease clean, on, clean, and uh, away you went. Clean, clean. Well, more to clean the crumbs from the sausage roll. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I have to. What? Well, yeah, it's definitely the slot car club with the best catering that I have ever been to. The coffee was very good, and when they order it, and you order a, you go up, pay the man, and I order sausage roll halfway through the afternoon. Um, he brings it to you. I mean, it's not just. <laughs> That's outrageous. It's, it's it's you know it's trackside service. Wow. I think they should bill it as that's a major attraction for the thing. Anyway, so that's my return. So I've been racing twice in one week. I think last year I went racing twice in the whole year, and the last time before that was years before that. So um, it was good. And I, I say thank you to the guys. They made me very welcome. One of them even mentioned the podcast. Mm. So this now. Yeah. A listener. I've met a listener. I've met a listener. Oh. And did they ask for your yeah. autograph? No. Yeah, sad times. <laughs> so, uh, you think you'll go again? Because basically, what you've done there, I think you've you've sampled two sort of extremes, really, haven't you? I mean, the um, I always get the name wrong, but Bolextric one is a permanent setup, routed wood. Uh, the South, the Worthing one is random because he posts on his website what the layouts are going to be months in advance um but it and like you said it always changes um i think we have to get you to somewhere else where they've got a kind of semi-permanent thing um and they're more they're more into the cleaning of their tires what like oxford uh, i've been yeah i've been to oxford i think our I mean, is I'm, slightly I'm... different to a lot of clubs i don't think we're I'm going to use the phrase, we're not as up ourselves as a lot. Or certainly I managed to try and keep us un-up ourselves as much as possible. <laughs> Any club I, think the phrase you're looking, I, think the, I think the phrase you're looking for is down to earth. Down to earth. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we've got... Grounded. We've got a chap who is... Um, there's a... always makes me giggle. I think it's called a Hard Body Championship or National Hard Body Championship uh, on Slot Forum. And he's always top three or four in that um seemingly whenever i look at the results and he's a regular racer and he does well and he he comes along and he tolerates my idiocy so um top marks to him um i uh, i think anybody who try. knows me will go on sorry no it's good anybody who knows me knows that the last thing i've got is a hard body and <laughs> soft and squidgy but <laughs> But I think you're you've on a slippery slope, and we need to encourage you to go to another club. Where else might be near you? I can't think of any. Isn't there some? Didn't there used to be a club in Hastings? Ah, but well, there's a, there is another club in Worthing. Oh, um, which uh, which is more famous oh, yeah, yeah, to me. Yeah. Uh, as I've been there. They do digital, though, don't they? They do digital. Yeah. Now, um, uh, the only thing I ever won was a digital championship. I won off tournament perhaps a hornby weekend uh, i'm sure that 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 you know, past success is no guarantee of future form i think <laughs> is the, the best thing. i can't um, think what the, but no i'm t- the, the other i'm tempted to go there uh, yeah i i would encourage you to the I, I went once i tried it once and i didn't like it um i went once and it was interesting uh partly i went because i wanted to try digital and I did find it interesting. You needed, it struck me, a spotter. You, I mean, we were in teams of two for certainly the one race that I remember. We were in teams of two. And your, your co-driver was basically a spotter who was, I think, keeping an eye on the fuel or keeping an eye on the competition or just keeping an eye while you concentrated on the racing. And um, it was interesting. But then, I don't know what it is now, then it was a two-lane digital setup. And I just didn't like it. I'm afraid, but they had a big they had okay. a big circuit, and it was fun, and uh, I've never been <laughs> I've never been since, and have no plans to go again. Sorry, the the people running it are well, nice people well, though, without a word. Well, without here word? here's 
here's a here's a thought to plant in your mind. One of the things they run is effectively a team race, and it's teams of two. Isn't that what I just said? So, Scott? yeah, but you could come along, oh, and we could enter as a as a team. Oh, yeah, we could do that. Um, and you could try and convince me of the merits of putting things on my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing is, I've just checked my diary, and I think I'm busy that day. Oh. Yeah. Shame. I'm done with digital. I've tried it once, and I didn't like it. Actually, I've tried it several times, and I didn't like it. Um, but the team, it's not proper. The team thing. It's not. It's not pure. It's it's a perversion it's, of a pure thing. It's a. <laughs> You're more of an Old Testament slot racer, are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, and I've got my commandments, and I keep to them. Okay. Anyway, I think we should. I, I, I've. I like going to clubs. I mean, I've been to different ones. As I say, I tend to go once just to kind of tick. See, tick the box. That's wrong. That's the wrong motivation. I like. I like the idea I like of sampling to to other people's mm. tracks because I do. Mm. Um, I don't. I think Oxford's been going now something like twelve, maybe fifteen years, and the circuit has only changed probably three times in that period. And the the second change was not great at all. It wasn't massive. They made it into a figure of eight. That the bulk of the twisty stuff stayed exactly the same, and there is a degree of kind of well, let's try something else. Um, see mm. how other people race. That's good. I think you should come down to the the one in Worthing in the cafe. Well, I kind of intend to. I'm not exactly sure when, but I, uh, Johnny, if you're listening, I apologise in advance. I do intend to try and descend on your um, cafe, if only for sausage roll, uh, coffee yeah. delivered and to me. And if he gets higher than six, they will only gloat about it. I won't get higher than six. You see, from what you were saying earlier, there were some serious people there. Um, There's some very, very quick guys, and uh, I mean, blindingly quick. And I think, uh, again, one of the things which kind of struck me as, as odd, because I'm used to crash and burn, uh, and forgive me, I can't remember who it was, but there was one race, uh, a car came off three times that I noticed, and he still won that heat. Um, so he's going very fast. Yeah. Um, whereas crash and burn, he would have been out. I are going slower. I have a real so, issue uh, with crash and burn because I think it, if you're not good, it reduces your track time, um, and I think that's uh, a negative thing. But obviously, it does, in theory, it does make you more disciplined and make you more cautious, maybe, or just. Um, it just sharpens you up, possibly, because if you do come off, then that's it. You've done your race. But if you come off after three corners, it's a bit gutting, isn't it? But that's, again, earlier on, we were talking about versus real life. And, you know, it's how often does somebody go out at the start of a, a Grand Prix and that's it. Or even at the start of Le Mans, for God's sake. Yeah. You know, so, um, it's horses for courses. People enjoy different things, and it's it, it can be. I think it's one of the great things about visiting different clubs. It's not just different track surfaces, track layouts, but also the different ways that people go racing. And it is the a different ways people have, yeah, and the different ways people have fun with toy cars. Um, and I think we're going to talk about it on another episode. But we came across something where a guy's done a bit of actual, oh, yeah, kind of you know, almost scientific research into happiness from slot cars and i think that's a really interesting thing to look into and i did say i would uh, check out that video and i will because it did i watched the first couple of seconds as i said and i just thought oh this is interesting i don't know why and i'm going to get boring here but i find the idea of studying the evolution of cultures quite interesting as i get older i realize uh, this is maybe a massive digression and perhaps i'll edit this out but when my auntie v died she was 101 years old and in the eulogy Somebody said, so uh, Vera came into this world and there was no Woolworths in the UK. Uh, Vera came in, uh, Woolworths came in, sorry, and they set up a massive company within the UK and they went bust or whatever they did and closed and Vera was still around. So she, she sort of saw everything from horses to space shuttles. Um, and I find that fascinating. And I realise now that I am as old as I am, that I've seen some incredible changes. I mean, the internet and all that stuff, for starters. Um but I find the evolution of culture interesting, and I find the the idea of, um, like I say, it's a broad church slot cars, and there are so many different types. It is a curious thing, because you were saying about the whole, uh, what, what were you talking about? The way that we are racing cars, but we're not in the cars. We're just watching a car do the racing. Uh, it's, it's slightly existential, isn't it? 
there's a, there's something about that, and it's I think it's something I'll maybe look into later. But it's certainly uh, you know, the, I get a lot of fun watching the car. Yeah. Even though I'm dri- I'm driving it, so it's not completely uh, an external experience, but it's it's somehow or other this duality of both. It's me doing it, but I'm watching it happen. Yeah. And I'm not. And I, th- I think the only other thing that's like that is radio control. Yeah. Uh, I guess where you've got a vehicle or a radio control, and you're even more doing in something because you you put the steering angle in. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it's. Uh, People can write in and tell me there's a million other things in life which are the same, but uh, yeah, it seems uh, it's an interesting facet of this, Scott. Um, Scott, we've got vaguely philosophical at the end of this one. I'm not sure that's a good, oh, it's age. I don't think it's a good look. It's age, it's not a good look. Okay, well, we'll we'll sum up then. So, to sum up, you've seen some things which have wound you up, and some things and that I have not wound re- up. Let's not paint me as a completely grumpy, slug. okay? I mean, I am, but let's not paint me that way. <laughs> And I've been I've been racing not terribly successfully. So the the universe is kind of where it started. Which <laughs> what? It goes around, comes around, and that's yeah. What? And we've we've upset the, our American listeners. Yeah. And I'm sorry about that. Please please keep listening. The thing is, if they comment, if I put this up on YouTube and they comment, then that helps us. So let's encourage them to do that. Does it? Yeah. Even even if they say we don't know what we're talking. Yeah about. yeah yeah. Because then I'll engage with them and oh. argue the toss. <laughs> and then I look wrong. forward to that. So, what do you do? Uh, let's let's try and. Uh, is there anything to ease this to an end nicely? By what are we doing next week? What are we doing we next week? Well, I'm I'm. We don't know, but I've got. Uh, there's going at least one slot car, an eBay purchase, <gasps> which should be arriving. Uh, are you buying that car? wing car? <laughs> no, <laughs> very much no. Um, not my thing. I don't think it would even go round my track. To be honest, yeah. I mean, I think it, yeah. I mean, but um, no, no, it's an old uh, SCX uh, car, uh, which is you know probably quite slow, but it looks lovely, and I will talk about that when it arrives. Um, who knows what new stuff is arriving? Um, Having had the rover, the Bastos rover was a very big excitement a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Um, so there's a few other things which are still on pre-order, so we'll see what trickles through. Maybe we should close by asking, what is it you've recently received, Pedro? Me? <laughs> um, yes. Well, I can tell you one thing that I received this morning in the post, which had me very happy and might see me toddle off to Pendle, was something from um, the, uh, what do you call it, the Premium Bombs people. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, excellent. Happy days, that's the way you start a Monday something through the letterbox and it's it, on your scale i think it's um well, actually it's on your scale it's two it's two slot it's worth so i'm very chuffed with that but i, would, wow. I probably won't buy two slot it's worth um what am i doing thunder slot this tomorrow oh, yeah thunder slot no gosh it's two slot it's or one fish-eyed 80 quid mustang i will get over it but not for a while oh well how much how much is the thunder slot mustang it, you then? know when i said it's 88 quid that would be a hint. Well, it's not much more than a slot it then, is it? Uh, so twenty quid. What's a slot it now? From Young Sean. Sixty. Yeah, eight or twenty. Oof, that's quite a bit for something that is. No, that's not go then. Oh yeah, there. So something that's no. got fish eyes. Um, I will see one of those in the flesh tomorrow, which will be interesting. I will doubt this comment on that next time uh, we speak. And tomorrow at the club, it is. Uh, what is it? I've killed the website. <laughs> Uh, which has all the meetings on. So apologies to anyone who goes to our website trying to find what we're doing tomorrow. Uh, I believe it's classic NSRs. Um, Is that a tactic so that nobody can prep the right? Yeah, car everyone rocks up practice. with the wrong thing, and I go, no, 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 it's this. I like, I like the, I can, you know, devious. Yeah. It's very I've good. Got to it's win somehow, devious. Scott. Uh, fair means or foul. Okay, it's just about taking part. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> never. As as I see, if you've listened this far, well thank you very much. And uh, we'll be back again, sorry, uh, when we've worked out what else we can talk about. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Happy slotting, everybody. Happy slotting. Cheerio, Scott. <laughs>